Hello and good morning friends, welcome to CEC Edisette live lecture. Dear friends, as you know that from time to time uh, we try to bring uh, some interesting topics for you so that uh, it would help you in your course material. But sometimes we feel that uh, uh, why don't we cater to the subjects or the topics uh, uh, which deals with the real life problems. So dear friends, uh, we are going to make this session very interesting because today we are, have taken a very important topic and the topic is management principles. Now you must be thinking that management principles is what you all study in your books but dear friends today's session is going to be very important very interesting because today uh, once again we have with us in our studios uh, dr subhash kakkar and dr kakkar uh, will elaborate uh, the management principles in context to the real life situations to the problems which are faced uh, with the uh, with the, uh, the profession also as well as uh, while managing things also so what excellent examples he has today for us uh, i hope that he has something interesting because he himself is very energetic very dynamic uh, regarding the delivery of this lecture so without wasting any time i would like to welcome our guest dr subhash kakkar dr Th kakkar welcome to the edisette lecture thank you geetika as the and lecture uh, topics itself uh, suggest, uh, management principles, though we can uh, predict in well advance it is regarding the principles of the management, but uh, as we discussed uh, previously that uh, this lecture is going to be interesting because uh, it has some uh, beautiful examples, some real life situations. What are they? We want to know through you. Sure. Welcome viewers. Today's lecture I am going to devote to management principles with respect to our day to day life problems. And when we proceed in our life, we learn a lot of things from our experiences and these experiences become principles for others who see it very minutely. And they make the principles and they make the theories so that others can also learn from our mistakes and our experiences. And today's lecture, I am devoting to my own experiences, rather the lessons I learned from my mother. She was a an uneducated lady, hardly primary school pass. But during her life, she learned and she gave the principles to her children also. I also learned a lot of things. And when I went to college for management education, I found that all these principles have already been told by mother to me. And those things I'm going to discuss with my own experiences, but with my own examples. Here, I have said my mother was uneducated, but by the end of this lecture, viewers will appreciate that my mother was not uneducated, but she was the most educated lady, as she imparted knowledge and experience and education to her children in very good narrated examples. <coughs> uneducated, I have already explained doesn't mean that people should have degrees, certificates, and they should go to the colleges, and they should go to the universities, so that they are called educated in the society. But on the contrast, when people, while working, they learn a lot of things, they get more experienced, and they are more educated in my view, especially ladies when they are bringing up their family, then when they are working in the kitchen, they learn a lot of things and they become experts in their own field. I would say that each one of us who are working on some problem in any organization, and if even they are working at a lowermost position, they are basically CEO of their own problems in the company. They know much better than anybody else in the company regarding their the problems which they are supposed to solve. So nobody is more educated or less educated. The way we look at the things, we are educated and we are uneducated. So the problem is there. We are looking for the problem and we are looking solution to the problem. We are working on the problem. Then nobody else 
but we are the CEO of the company. Lesson number one, what I learned from my mother is the team building process. She always used to say that one plus one, don't say it is two, it is always more than two and it is 11. It is, it is a normal phrase what we learn from our elders in day to day life also. So same thing she explained in her own language and the same thing has been translated so that the viewers can understand the meaning of team building. Output of any individual when it is counted separately, it is only addition of those inputs. But when the individuals are working in a team, their output is multiplied, not only added. So this multiplication fact increases the output of the team. So that is to be now demonstrated in the form of a team building process. Let us assume that there are three workers working in an organization on a problem to find a solution and there is a common goal in front of them to achieve. And three workers are namely A, B and C and their individual output is one unit of production, two units of production and three units of production. When they are working separately as standalone employees, their output will be 1 plus 2 plus 3. A plus B plus C is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6 units of output and total output is of 6 units when they are working individually and their total output is of 23 units when they are working like a team. Now how these 23 units are calculated just look at the slide and these three workers with individual outputs 1, 2 and 3 and when they are working in the form of a team their output will be A plus B plus C plus AB plus BC plus CA plus ABC and the total will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 6 plus 3 plus 6 is equal to 23 units. And this was explained by my mother that when these workers are working individually, their outputs can be added just like that. But when they are working in the form of a team, they will give you the output individually also. They will be working together also in pairs and all together working on the job and their output will be 23 units. This explains that the team output is always more than the individual output when summed together. So beautifully this team concept was explained by mother to me. Again she told me that when the workers are working on a goal to achieve the thinking of all the workers should be in one direction that they should be working towards achieving the goal. And she said if the one of the workers even his output is the minimum but if it is in the negative direction the out, total output of the team will become negative. How is it so she explained in her own language and the same has been translated here. Here the, uh, the previous three workers are taken A, B, C but the output of worker A which was giving the least output is now considered negative. So his output is now minus 1, B's output is 2 and C's output is 3. And now the total output when they are working in the form of a team A plus B plus C plus A, B plus B, C plus C, A plus A, B, C again equal to minus 1 plus 2 plus 3 minus 2 plus 6 minus 3 minus 6. If we add it together with respective signs also the total output will be minus 1. This shows that, that even if the team consideration is there and if the thinking of one of the employees is in the opposite direction then the total output will get reduced. So we have to work in the team to get the maximum results and the thinking of all the employees who are working in the team as members, their thinking should be only in one direction towards achieving the 
common goal. <clears throat> so the lessons learned from this example and this teaching are, it is necessary to work in teams to enhance the output. And second lesson is, it is also important to align the thinking of all the members of the team in one direction, that is to achieve the common goal. My mother explained in her own language, the same has been translated in a mathematical form and it is in front of viewers. Lesson number two, how to improve memory and importance of SWOT analysis and this SWOT analysis is being done for self, not for others, self SWOT analysis. There is an example. Okay, what happened to me long back? I used to recite Hanuman Chalisa, which is a religious book, and I used to recite on daily basis. I had a small booklet, I used to keep it on a table where I used to study in my bedroom. And daily morning after taking bath, and I used to recite this Hanuman Chalisa and on the other side, my mother used to make breakfast for me. On one side, I used to complete by Hanuman Chalisa, on the other side, my mother used to complete making the breakfast for me. After reciting Hanuman Chalisa, I used to take breakfast and go to my office. One day it so happened that my mother on the previous day while cleaning the table kept this Hanuman Chalisa booklet somewhere which I was not able to locate. And in the morning after taking bath, I was in search of that booklet so that I can recite it. But I was not able to locate it. I shouted at my mother and told her, when I have told you not to touch articles in my bedroom, why did you disturb? After preparing the breakfast, she came to my room and asked me, son, what has happened? Then I told her the complete story that I am not able to locate Hanuman Chalisa on my table. She said, okay, look son, sit and start reciting Hanuman Chalisa. If you forget it, I will rather help you. I started reciting it. And to my surprise, without taking any help from her, I was able to recite Hanuman Chalisa completely. She said, now, without taking my help, you are able to do this job. And now there are two lessons for you. And these lessons are, the first lesson is, if you want to remember something forever, do it again and again. This is the lesson number one. If you want something to get embedded in your heart and mind, do it again and again so that you will never forget it in th throughout your life. And the second lesson is, know you and your team members strengths and weaknesses before assigning jobs to them. You did not know your strength that you remember Hanuman Chalisa thoroughly. But when you were put to test, you were able to do it. Similarly, in the job also, you should know your strengths and your own weaknesses and the strengths and the weaknesses of your team members so that you are able to assign correct jobs to the correct member so that the output is maximum in an effective manner and in the <coughs> lowest time period. This is the lesson number two. When I studied management and the same concept was taught in the college also and that concept we used to call it Jory window. Jory window says that when you are working in a team, if you are a leader, if you are a member, there are two things you have to do. You keep disclosing about yourself, what are your strengths, what are your likings what are your dislikings and then encourage members of your team also to disclose their own strengths and weaknesses. Then 
each one of you will know each other's strengths and weaknesses and accordingly you can expect jobs from your leader as well as your team members and jory window is nothing but a window with four panes it is divided into four parts first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant and fourth quadrant the first quadrant is open and free area second is blind area third is hidden area and the fourth one is unknown area as far as jory window is concerned he has given different names to these four pens one is known self things we know about ourselves and others know about us x axis and y axis are taken known to self x axis and unknown to self similarly vertical axis unknown to others and known to others and the second is hidden self things we know about ourselves that others do not know and third is blind self things others know about us that we do not know and the fourth quadrant is unknown self things neither we nor others know about us that is a blind corner so jory window what my mother taught me long back i learned in the college while completing my mba course what we get from our own experiences and people like jory etc demonstrate in the form of principles and theories so that others can also get benefit out of it i learned it from mother i learned it during my studies also and now i know that the same concept how it is useful uh, in our day to day life lesson number 3 how to memorize long back when i was in school i used to have difficulty in memorizing things in memorizing replies to different questions i used to get tired also once i asked my mother mother please tell me how to remember the things all the time so that whenever somebody asks or whenever the exam is there i should be able to reproduce without any difficulty i remember it today but tomorrow i forget i remember i try to memorize it today but the next day in the exam i am not able to reproduce it because i forget it mother told me a story story of a guru and that story is like this there was a guru who used to teach his students in an ashram in a forest one day one of the students asked the guru i forget the things i can't remember them whatever i study so please tell me some method so that i can remember these things forever so that any time you ask me i am able to answer the questions but i am not able to keep anything in mind whatever i study whatever i memorize it goes away guru told him bring one strainer by which we filter the tea and gave it to him so that and asked him to bring water in it and that student went to a nearby river to bring water in that strainer but he was not able to fill this strainer with water as it had seep whatever he used to fill it in it he used to get drained he came back 
with an empty strainer and told Guru that I am not able to fill any water in it. And then Guru took that student to the river and he went with him and told him to dip the strainer in the water itself. Student dipped the strainer in the water and the Guru asked him, what is the condition of strainer now? Students said, now it is full of water. Then the Guru told him, this is a lesson to be learned. Now this is full of water, nothing is getting drained out of it because it is now immersed in water. The same thing is with you also. You forget whatever is taught to you. It gets drained from your mind. And if you want to remember it forever, you keep your mind immersed in studies all the time. If you are able to do it, then you will remember the thing forever. So if you want to remember whatever you want, then keep yourself immersed in that particular thing. If you are studying, then you have to keep yourself immersed in studies all the time. All the time you think about what you have learned and that will help you in memorizing the things and then you will never forget the things what you learn because nothing will get drained. And this story my mother told me and I remember it now also, today also, I keep narrating this story to my juniors and then they start working and they get immersed in their own thoughts and those thoughts cannot be removed from their memory. This is a good lesson. If the students want to memorize anything, they should get immersed in the studies all the time. Their aim, their main focus must always be on the studies only. Lesson four, be perfectionist. When you are working on a job, you should be perfectionist. You complete the job in such a way that nobody is able to find any fault in it. You should put or demonstrate through your job as a benchmark for others and it should be the better than the best available so that others should see it like a showpiece, like a benchmark, like a thing to be followed. This is taught by my mother. If you are working in any organization, your job should be 110 percent correct and your boss should always be praising you. And the similarly, if you are working on a life problem, on a day to day problem, your attitude should be to give the perfect results and your performance should be the best, flawless and a benchmark for others. For this to achieve, you must know the best available in the market and give something better than available. Give such a piece of work which is a generation above the others in standard, in quality, in aesthetics also. My mother used to stitch garments for me. She used to make sweaters and jerseys for me. She was so perfectionist. In the morning, I used to see what she prepared last day before going to the office. She used to show me a complete length of one side already prepared by her and such a beautiful. But in the evening, when I used to come back, I used to ask her, show me what have you done in the day? But in the day, she used to tell me, I have made only this much only, which was very small. When I used to ask her, why it is now small, already I have seen a big piece already made. She told me that she found one of some of the mistakes in the previous knitting, knitted portion. So she opened everything and started making it again so that there should not be any flaw. Such was the attitude of my mother 
in completing her jobs. This I learned from her that give the perfect as a perfectionist as an output and that should become a benchmark for others. <clears throat> Corelli can also be added here, give your best all the time, do not compromise with the second best. This is a lesson to be learned from this episode. Lesson 5, what I learned from my mother, inventory management. She has, rather she had clear cut idea regarding inventory management, regarding household items, regard, regarding items to be maintained in, the, maintained in the kitchen. Her idea was, do not stock anything in large quantities in your house. There are problems if you stock items in large quantities. And what are those problems? You will have to have a bigger storage area and you will have to have bigger bins to keep those items. And she also knew that if these items are not used for a long time, these will get deteriorated. She also knew that. And if items are stored for a long time, by the time you require them, a better quality items are available in the market. So, store or stock only those quantities which you are going to use in near future, otherwise do not stock them. Her idea was do not waste money and do not waste space in keeping a stock of these items in large quantities. Let the people who are selling these items to you store them for you. And then availability of these items should be close by to your residence, so that the moment you require these items, you should go to the market and buy them. So, her idea was stock the items in the quantities which are going to be used in near future. Purchase in quantities depending upon your frequency of visiting market. She used to tell me if your frequency of visit to the market is high, then at any time you can go to the market and buy the items. For that you need not require to stock them in the house. Then hang a blank sheet of paper in the kitchen and keep writing the items to be bought in the next visit to the market. She used to maintain a list, a blank sheet where anybody can come and write the items to be bought. Whenever somebody used to feel that this item is going to be out of stock and that item's names were written in that blank sheet. Whenever we used to go to the market, we used to carry that list and used to bring the items. So, this was the procedure being followed. The same procedure can be followed in the organizations. Here, the items should not be stocked in large quantities. We teach our students that, that will block our money. We will have to lose interest on the money blocked. Things will get deteriorated as their shelf life is less. Nowadays, we talk about zero inventory, Kanban and this has come only through experience and my mother knew it long back and she used to tell us through her own experiences. Zero inventory is the best policy, is the best principle in life. You buy the item when you require it and do not stock it. Lesson 6, my mother says age and gender should not be a problem for carrying out a job. Job is there at any age, young or old, 
you should be able to do that job. Lesson to be learned here is one should keep his health in a proper condition all the time whether he is 16 or he is 60 years old. Regular exercise, keep an eye on your health, good heating, eating hab habits and maintain your health. So that at your old age also you are able to do the jobs without any problem. Second is whether you are a male, whether you are a female, you should be able to do any kind of job. No job is assigned for females only and no jobs are assigned for males only. And she told me this thing long back and nowadays we find that our policies, our government policies are such that women are being encouraged to do all kinds of jobs. And they are given priority also in certain areas where we used to say that these jobs are not meant for our women. Now, government is encouraging women to do all kinds of jobs and this thing I learned long back from my mother. Once again, age and gender are no criteria for doing any job. One should be able to do any job at any age, keep yourself fit at any age so that nobody is able to tell you that you are old and you are not able to do this job. One should be able to do the job irrespective of his or her gender also. She taught me cooking, she taught me embroidery, she taught me knitting, she taught me stitching also. I am able to do all kinds of jobs which were earlier meant for only women. This is only because of my mother. She had a vision and she used to tell us that no job is meant for only men, no job is meant for only women. All jobs, all people should be able to do. Lesson number seven, <clears throat> approximate calculations and approximate measurements. Nowadays, we require calculators to do calculations even if these calculations are very small. We have forgotten the rules and principles what we learned long back in our school days for making oral calculations. My mother taught me even if you do not know oral calculations, you should be able to do approximate calculations. And without spending time with those approximate methods, I used to do the calculations without making much of mistakes. And similarly, for measurement also, she taught me without any instrument, without any measuring instrument, one should be able to measure the things with correctness. Because nowadays when we are sitting in the meeting, sometimes questions are asked, sometimes we are make, we are supposed to make some calculation. If we do not have a calculator with us, then it becomes embarrassing when we are not able to make the calculations. With these approximate calculation methods, we can get the answer and we can tell it in the meeting. And similarly, measurements also without using the measurement instruments, we should be able to make the correct measurements. I will give you one or two examples how we used to measure the things without any measurement instrument. She was able to read, my mother was able to read from the inch tape, but for me, he, she never used inch tape. She used to prepare garments for me, jerseys for me, but 
she never used inch tape to check the length, to check the width. She used to use her own hand spans. With the hand spans, she was able to check the length and she used to check the length through fingers. And these were her methods for measurement. And when I used to feel very happy and proud, when she used to tell me, now my son has grown up because his jersey is now two fingers more than the previous years. Similarly, when she used to stitch garments for me, trousers for me, she used to tell, this year my son's trousers are four fingers more than the previous years. And I used to feel proud. I used to feel very happy. And it used to show her interest in me, her interest in my articles. Now she used to measure the lengths also, bigger lengths. If some plot is there, its length is to be checked, its length is to be measured, its width is to be measured, area is to be calculated. She used to check the length with her own steps. Her step, one step was worth two feet. And with this kind of method, she was able to tell the width and the length of the plot <coughs> with a lot of correctness. So same thing I am telling it to my viewers that the viewers can also make use of these methods. And for making calculations, for making measurements, when they don't have any instruments available. And all these were taught by my mother. Lesson number eight, managing your finances. She was very good at managing finances. Even less money, more money. She never used to go out of pocket. And she had her own methods to manage finances of the household. Live within your means. This was her motto in life. My mother was very good about separating need from want and spending accordingly. She knew the difference between need and the want. She knew that where it is to be emphasized, whether need or want or both. Have only little, but that little should be the best. Her idea was buy only little, but the little should be best and it should be enough for everything. Creating and living within a budget is probably the most impactful thing you can do if you are struggling with your finances. It is not how much money you earn that makes you rich. It is much. It is how much you keep it with you. That money will keep you rich. If you earn a lot and you spend everything what you have earned, then you are without money. If you earn, you spend half of it, half of it you are saving, then you are rich by half of the money. So curb your wants, curb your wants. This was her lesson to us. Be passionate about what you do. Be aggressive to see the results. She used to tell us again and again. Honesty is the best policy. She was preaching this lesson again and again. My mother used to say that you make a problem worse if you don't tell the truth. And she always reminded about how easy it is to lose credibility. Just one mistake undermines it and it's hard to get it back. The respect you have earned will go away with only one mistake. So she used to tell us honesty is the best policy. And this is to be told to our managers when they are working on the problems, they should be honest and they should give due importance to the integrity. Lesson number nine, nothing is handled, nothing is handed to you on a silver platter. You will have to earn it, you will have, you will have to work hard for it. 
don't feel sorry for yourself my mother hammered this in my mind and head so strongly she always believed despite whatever the circumstances you just should not feel sorry for yourself because you are working hard to achieve the results if something something wrong happens don't feel sorry for it at it as an opportunity to analyze and learn what went wrong if you feel like you lack expertise in an area start studying or ask relevant experts if you face a failure don't feel sorry for it then analyze what went wrong and where it went wrong and then do it again if you need help from others seek help help from others and do it again next time you are going to be successful live with no regrets i am often flabbergasted by the amount of time some people waste dwelling on their past failures rather than directing that energy into new projects my mother always taught me never to look back in regret but to immediately move on to the next thing this is very important we should forget the past failure immediately and move on to the future learn to live learn to survive fast any problem any failure is not death and life situation you have to move fast on the future projects behind every woman is her vision she had vision in front of her and that vision she worked for lesson number 10 housekeeping she was very good at housekeeping and she had her own ideas by which she used to maintain the house lessons on housekeeping are identify what is needed and what is not needed what is required and what is not required identify immediately and get rid of not needed items this is what is disposal waste disposal identify what are the items which are required which are to be needed and what are the items which are waste and that waste should be disposed of immediately this is what we learn now place for each item and keep each item in its designated place she used to tell whatever items are there in the house you should have a place identified for keeping them and then keep them all the items in their respective places and clean and shine items and surrounding areas regularly her idea was keep only required items and keep those items in their respective places and keep cleaning them on regular basis so that they are shining at all the times maintain items and surroundings very well then she used to tell keep a watch on the working of these items if something goes wrong with one of the items get it repaired immediately and you should be able to do the repairs yourself immediate repairs are required when something goes out of order use wall paintings diffusers room fresheners plants etc as mood elevators she had an idea that your house should be inviting to others your house should be in such a good condition that people like to come to your house when you have identified the needed items you have placed them in proper locations you have cleaned them the thing which is to be done more is then you should have good mood elevators in your houses like in house plants wall paintings diffusers to improve the environment then your house will always be inviting to others and she used to keep her house neat and clean all the time now miscellaneous lessons also she gave me 
and these miscellaneous lessons are share your happiness with others and it will multiply. If you are happy with something, you should share it with others and it is going to get multiplied and multiplied. On the other hand, she used to tell us, share your sorrow with others and it will reduce. If you share your sorrow with others, it will get reduced. Prior to this slide, I have discussed about her housekeeping methods. And these housekeeping methods are not meant only for the house. And these can be used in our offices and these can also be used in our factories, in organizations. The same similar technique can be copied. When I studied management, we were told 5S being used by Japanese people. And 5S is nothing but what my mother told me. Each S in 5S has a meaning and that meaning is exactly same as told by my mother. But 5S also has some things missing in their concept. My mother told me the maintenance part of the items also and keeping the house inviting. She used to tell me whatever lessons are there, keep it in mind all the time so that it becomes your habit. Habit for what? For housekeeping. Means identifying items required and identifying items not required and disposing these items immediately which are not required. And this should become the habit. She used to tell me the items are to be cleaned on regular basis by yourself. Why yourself? She used to tell me if you do it yourself, if you clean it yourself, next time you will be forced to think where from this dust is coming. You will try to stop the source of that dust so that next time you are not required to clean the items because no dust will be coming there. And she, al she always used to emphasize that whatever is taught, it is your habit. It should become your habit. Then she used to tell me that this habit should not remain your habit. It should become your hobby. You should start enjoying keeping the house in a proper condition. And if you start enjoying your job, you will do it like a game. Every time you do it, you will feel happy. And the same thing I am telling it to my viewers that if you are working in the organization, you keep it in such a way that it becomes inviting office for others to come. Now we were discussing miscellaneous lessons which my mother told me. Admit mistakes. If you have committed any mistake, admit it. Don't argue unnecessarily. It will bring tension among the people working in the organization. But the problem is, we think it otherwise. We commit mistakes thinking that we will be punished. And in some of the organizations, the culture is like this only, that if you make a mistake, you will be punished. Maybe you will be removed from the job if you have made a mistake. And that's why people don't own the mistake. They don't admit that they have committed the mistake, thinking that something wrong will happen to you. But my mother used to tell me, if you have made a mistake, admit it. And you should be the first person to tell it to others, tell it to your boss that I have made a mistake and I have a solution to rectify that mistake. That is the miscellaneous lesson I learned from my mother. Be content with little. We have discussed, we should know the difference between need and the want. Here it again comes that be content with little. There were numerous times growing, growing up when money was tight in our family. Nevertheless, my mother was content in it. 
even it is even if it was less we were able to maintain our expenses and our finances with little amount of money be content with much also she used to tell us there were also times when the bank accounts were healthy even more impressive my mother was content than as well the lesson is if you have less if you have more your needs and your wants should be limited if you have more money don't spend it fast so this is a lesson what is learned from my mother compete but remain fair she used to advocate that you should be the best in the journey of your job others should follow others should come after you a sense of competition should always be there in your mind but she used to tell us competition runs deep in our family but so does fairness also and i did hate to have the first without the second and this is the lesson my viewer should keep it in mind and the discipline is a virtue self discipline ought not to be feared but nurtured one has to nurture the discipline part in one's own working one should have the discipline and it should be kept all the time with anybody for example people should be always on time they should come to the office on time they should never be late now this thing is one has to be disciplined but what is the idea behind it when we are working in the organization we are paid for it but not only the payment is there but we are looking forward to our promotion also we are also looking forward to pay increase if we are late once if we are not able to follow the discipline that should pinch us and that should bring a feeling in us that this late coming is keeping us away from our goal of getting promotion and getting high pay increase this kind of attitude should always be there with us don't look for wealth in money there is a difference between wealth and money true wealth is never measured on a bank account or a bank statement and she never evaluated her by the number of zeros printed on it so she knew the difference between wealth and money wealth is earned wealth is embedded in yourself live with your income live within your income my mother always made adjustments in her spending on her only based on her income but never made any compromise with spending on her children she taught me the value of frugality when necessary but more importantly she taught me the joy of living within my means don't go out of your means don't start borrowing keep your wants and needs limited so always work within your means other small small lesson she taught me are loyalty to the organization when you are working in the organization you should be loyal to the job and this loyalty should be always maintained and she used to tell me one important thing that job has got the top most priority even your family comes next to your job when you are working in the job so the same sort of discipline and same sort of priority you have to maintain time management she was rather expert in time management she knew what exactly is to be done at what time she used to keep a record of the jobs which she was supposed to do she used to tell us that prioritize the jobs the important job should get the top most priority and top most 
slot in your time period. And similarly, low priority jobs should be lost in your priority. Allocate slots for planned jobs. When you have prioritized the jobs, then allocate the slots of time during the month, during the day, during the week, and see that those jobs are completed in those particular slots. And monitor your job as per schedule. All the jobs then finally should be done as per schedule. And then you will never go out of time. And then if you maintain your finances, you will never go out of your pocket. Take the challenges heads on. And this way, you can work in the organization, you can progress, you can achieve the results which you are dreaming. So viewers, we are able to discuss the management principles working with our life experiences, life problems. Working in life problems, we learn a lot of things. And my mother told me a lot of management principles which I have narrated and which I have shared with you. I hope viewers will be benefited from my own experience. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much. This topic was important in consideration to the uh, right, real life situation which we face. Uh, and uh, the objective is to uh, impart you knowledge with the help of uh, uh, all the course material, all the uh, subject concerned things uh, which you always expect from us but uh, such kind of lectures are for your personality development so that you never fail in life that is our objective with this note uh, i thank dr kakar for giving us immense knowledge uh, with the help of uh, taking an excellent example of uh, her mother we should identify all the persons in our life who in some way or the another uh, teaches us uh, some beautiful things thank you sir thank, thank you, you so very much thank you.